Hello everyone, welcome back to Axangel RC. So, after my initial testing and review of the Voyager, I did indeed do some changes. Most notably, I balanced some props and that turned out to be an adventure all on its own. First method I used, which is the most basic one, but does yield some little improvement, was to balance the props via the motors. Basically, I had one of the motor modules disconnected, but still on the spar so the plane would sit upright. The other had a prop only on one side, so I can feel the vibrations from only one prop at a time. Had to be outside because the plane will not arm without a GPS lock, hence the location. I would then arm it, throttle up a few times to get a feel for the vibrations, then disarm and put a piece of tape on one of the two blades of the prop and repeat the testing. Depending on the change of vibrations, I would either move the piece of tape to the other blade or put a smaller or larger piece. Might take a few tries to get there, it is a trial and error method. I balanced a full set of props that way and then flew, and it did sound a bit quieter, if nothing else. Results were not definitive after this test, but it did feel a bit better and it felt like the gimbal was doing better as well. Following that, I decided to modify one of my prop balancers to actually be able to balance these props, and that involved some hot glue and actually using parts from another balancer, but it worked. And guess what? Turns out the hub of these props is the largest problem by far. If you note here, no matter which way I turn the prop, it always ends up with the hub pointing down, which means that is the heaviest part of the prop. It becomes more notable when I balance the blades. Heaviest part of the hub always ends up pointing down. Initially, I decided to try and grind away some plastic from the heavy side to try and balance it that way, and I did so using my Dremel tool. Problem is, I ground it down almost all the way to the metal insert, and it was still heavy on that side, which was really bad. This was one ruined prop. Next, I figured I could try adding weight to the light side, as that would have a better chance of preserving the integrity of the prop, and after considering my options, I went with bolts. I would drill an M3 hole on the light side of the prop and would screw in an M3 bolt. I did try different size bolts, but the 6mm one seemed to be pretty much a perfect match weight-wise. Took some fine tuning by screwing them further in or out to get the right balance, then used CA glue to make sure they can't fly off while the prop is spinning, and guess what? Pretty much perfect balance. Prop now stayed in whatever position you put them, rather than rotate with the heaviest bit down. But seriously, it took an M3 6mm bolt to balance the hub out. That is some serious imbalance. Those hubs are as close to crap as you can get while still looking semi-decent. It's like a polished turd. Polished, but still a turd. HEQ claim they've had thousands of successful flights with those props and they are okay, and true as that may be, having so much vibration is never good for the longevity of these machines or their components. The prop balance is shit, making the props shit if you have to go through this to balance them out, and following so many years of DJI copters and race copter props spoiling end users, that art of balancing props has long been forgotten, some perhaps never even knew it existed. It. One good thing is that all the props seem to be heavier on the same side, which means that perhaps, if we assume this is valid for all the props, you could just blindly add an M3 6mm bolt on the opposing side and hope it is the correct one, but 4 out of 4 here makes for some pretty good odds. Besides, if you get the sides wrong, you'd hear and feel the vibrations once you put them on the plane for sure, as it will sound really bad. So, with my both balanced props in hand and the Voyager, I went on my vacation. The vacation spot is roughly 400 kilometers away from my usual flying locations, but for the first flight there, I did not do any calibrations, and as you might expect, first chance it got, it did the dip and hover trick, luckily only once. Even though it was a calm afternoon, the gimbal was pretty shaky, though I have to admit, hearing it hover at the start and end of the flight, I can tell you that the balancing made a difference. The plane was not 
noticeably quieter and the usual resonating sounds were no more. In addition, while flying overhead, it was again exceptionally quiet, you'd have to struggle to hear it passing by. If nothing else, at least I was happy the balancing worked and the plane would no longer struggle with excessive vibrations. The Voyager may have the benefit of a damped gimbal, but the K1 would strongly disagree with HEQ's statement that these props are okay. The only flight that was okay with the K1 and did not show any vibrations was the one where I used the original DJI Phantom 3 props, which are as close to balanced as you can get from a factory prop and it shows. Given that, as it turns out, almost all of the people that founded HEQ are ex-DGI employees, I'd expect they would be aware of the importance of balanced props, especially when you can so clearly see the problem on the K1. And them being ex-DGI employees actually explains why this plane looks like something DGI would have designed if they ever make a plane. But anyway, let's move on. A few days later, HEQ sent me a new app, which I installed on the remote, which now allowed updating of the app directly from within it, which I also did, so now it was at version 1.0.1, .1, up from 1.0.0, .0, and there were some changes indeed. Some camera controls and some additional calibration options were added. Before the next flight, I decided to recalibrate the compass and airspeed sensors again, and I also noticed that the app was telling me that I should do a level calibration as well, and so I did. This time though, I did not plug the airspeed sensors hole during the calibration, calibrated the compass again, and finally also did the level calibration, which is the easiest of all. And guess what? After takeoff, in addition to the now noticeably low lower noise levels coming from the Voyager, it did not do any dip, flip and hover tricks once it went to fixed wing mode. And that persisted throughout the remainder of the flight during my stay there. So it would appear that doing all the calibrations properly does fix that issue, which is good to know and I hope it will stay that way. Thing is though, that even with the balanced props, the gimbal was still experiencing some occasional shaking, especially when giving it up, down or turning commands. Seems like there may still be room for improvement of the motor control tuning or algorithms or PIDs in some way, as I think some of that shaking may be due to too sharp reactions from the motors perhaps. Who knows though, I can't quite put my finger on it. In some situations it doesn't shake, in others it does shake pretty annoyingly. What I have noticed though is that even if there is wind, so long as you keep giving it very gentle commands or just leave it flying straight, the gimbal looks the most stable and there are pretty much no shakes. Now, HEQ did inform me that they have decided not to ship out the pre-orders yet and to actually design a new nose for the Voyager with a new and improved mounting system for the gimbal in an attempt to reduce the shaking in such situations, which is pretty nice as they could have just as easily shipped them out and called it a day. Let's hope this new improvement will actually improve things. In other good news, I figured out why my screen capture app was slowing down the video feed. I had set it to record at 25 frames per second, but when I changed that setting to auto, it no longer slowed down the video feed or had any notable negative effect on it, hence why I was able to screen capture all of my flights in addition to having the recordings from the gimbal. As for the newer HEQ Fly app, the camera controls are better, but there is still much work to be done, especially on those same camera controls. They work to start and stop video and take photos, but they are not synced to the buttons on the remote, so starting the video capture from the remote is not reflected in the app. And also those app controls stop working if you lose and then regain the link to the plane. The camera settings button does not work as well, so I guess that will come with a future update. I usually have my phone running in hotspot mode for the remote so it can load maps, especially for new locations, but if your Wi-Fi is on and connected with internet running while the remote is linking up to the plane, the video feed will not show up. You have to disable the Wi-Fi prior to starting the app, which you should start only after the green LED on the remote has come on to indicate a successful link, and only after you see the video feed from the camera working in the app, then enable the Wi-Fi and connect to the internet. It is a bit of a hassle, but it is what it is, at least for the time being. I remember having the same issue with the CHM30 system as well, so nothing new here. 
I would also like to have an update on the remote itself to allow for expo and perhaps even dual rate settings on at least some of the channels, the gimbal rollers for instance, as they are way too sensitive and cause quick movements of the gimbal, which pretty much eliminates the option to use it for slow panning or tilting with cinematic effects in mind. The choppy movements are pretty ugly and annoying to be honest, so I would like to be able to adjust that and make them as smooth as the DJI ones. Another issue with the gimbal, as mentioned in my previous video, is the horizon drift during turns. However, I noticed something quite interesting. If the gimbal is pointed as close to level as possible, when turning there is pretty much no horizon drift easily noticeable, which makes for some nice looking turns. However, if the gimbal is pointed down, turning makes its horizon drift, and the more down it is pointed, the bigger the horizon drift. I do hope HEQ will be able to sort this out and make it perform better in any gimbal gimbal orientation. One good thing of the remote though is the battery life. It took a heck of a long time to charge but during the 6 flights I had there, 15 to 20 minutes each, I have used up around 20% from the battery of the remote which is pretty impressive. That thing would definitely last at least 10 hours if not the whole promised 15 hours of on time. Neat stuff indeed. Another interesting surprise was finding out that the charger provided with the Voyager does not actually fully charge the batteries. The LiPos you get with these planes are of the high voltage variety, meaning at full charge their voltage should be 4.35 volts per cell. When I'm charging them with my eye charger, I do use the high voltage profile and they do get fully charged, which is also reflected in the app as it is showing 100% battery at that voltage. However, during my vacation, I only had the factory Voyager charger with me and use that to charge the packs and upon connecting them to the plane the app was reporting that they are charged to roughly 85-89% to which is 4.2 volts per cell which is what a normal LiPo would be at when fully charged not a high voltage one. The specs on the back of the charger do claim 17.4 volts and voltage but it seems to only be able to do 16.8 which is not too big of a problem however it did cut my range test short as I had to turn back due to battery getting lower earlier. Good thing is that not charging them to the full voltage would definitely increase the lifespan of the batteries at the expense of a few minutes of flight time. Could be only my unit is that way, who knows. We'll have to charge them with the K1 charger and see if that one is different. And speaking of range testing, I did fly with the directional antennas and I did go for range during one of my flights tried to see if I would be able to reach the city in the distance and in fact I was able to and didn't even have to be at maximum altitude for that which was nice and the video quality in the radio is definitely much better than the one on the K1 and I would have made it all the way out to the promised 8 kilometers and perhaps even more than that if it wasn't for the battery not being fully charged. But alas, I had to turn back so as not to risk running out of juice before I've had a chance to land, so this test will need to be repeated again. Sadly, not at that location. I'm going to do more testing both with the balanced and non-balanced props so I can more accurately compare. We'll also pull some logs from the autopilot to see how much vibrations it is recording, but that will be in another video. Right now it seems the balanced props heat up the motors a bit less and it feels like they have yielded a slight increase in the flight time, although the Voyager definitely flies less than what the K1 can do, but I will have to do a dedicated endurance run to verify that. I do check the motors often and for the time being they appear to be solid on their mounts, no signs of unglued magnets or defective bearings. I do hope they will last. I do feel like taping the wings together is definitely a must and I do it on every outing. The plane definitely has a lot of potential, I was able to get some pretty nice and smooth shots over the sea at sundown and they look pretty good, but I do wish the camera had a higher bitrate and image quality than this, but oh well, this isn't really too bad for the measly 30 megabits per second that it is right now. Still have to play around with the altitude limits, but I think the low altitude limit can be disabled by setting the transition altitude limit to zero, but still have to test that and will also tackle the maximum altitude limit as well, just need to find some low hanging clouds to make that flight a bit more interesting. I did have some good fun with the Voyager on this trip, 
with the case it is pretty convenient to move around even if a good deal heavier than a DJI drone. It is more interesting and unusual and looks awesome in the air especially now that it also sounds good and not like a failing PC fan. HEQ still have work to do and it seems they are committed so we will see what will come out of it but for now it does a pretty decent job with a bit of work put into it. I think this is all for now, if I've missed something it will be in the next video. But until then, if you have enjoyed this video please consider liking, sharing it and subscribing and also consider using the new super thanks option now available on my videos to show your support. Using any of the affiliate links in the description below to purchase anything from those websites will also go a long way towards supporting this channel at no additional cost to you. Yet another way you can support me is Patreon, the link is also there with the buy me a coffee link right under it for those who prefer that method. I would like to express my eternal gratitude to all all the people who have supported me so far in any way and would continue to do so. I wish you all successful flights and I will see you next time.